uh, so happy to see you. I'm very honored to be um, sharing this with you. I've met and I've worked with quite a number of you and I've known many of you also. Um, I, will, I think you've been having great fun for the last few days and a lot of sessions, so I'm not going to ask you to introduce yourself again. I've looked at some of your um, backgrounds and, and uh, your experiences. I think it's great. It's a great uh, team that you're having. Uh, unfortunately, I'm only given an hour, and now it's only 45 minutes. And uh, I've, given th I've been given three topics, how to, how to raise funds and find sponsors, and what should they be careful about when fundraising. Second is, what is the best way to approach grant makers, and what could an application stand out from the crowd, and how to engage grant makers, how to get the relationship right, and how to work better together with them. I can't finish them in an hour. Now I've got only 45 minutes, so I've got a very good excuse not to be able to finish them. But I promise you, I'll give you something bigger and something more important so that it will be um, your, uh, uh, I won't say gun, I'm going to do thumb, thumb simple, what do you call it? Thumb, um, thumb, it's not thumbing, uh, your rule of thumb uh, for the next year or so. Um, and it, I, I think I want to concentrate on strategic vision, which is how do you, how do you plan your strategy and then ask for fundraising. It is not the other way around. Uh, so let me explain. And uh, do, do feel free to raise your hand. In the end, we will have a little time for questions, but I don't want to delay your dinner. Um, I want to introduce a bit about myself so that you know why I'm talking this way. And I studied drama, so I, I will explain things in a more drama term. Um, I'm currently holding three posts at the university with one salary. Um, this is my office, and I, the foundation is the fundraising arm, and then I also teach undergrad and postgrad courses uh, in the university. It's very exciting. Um, I also teach at the Academy for Performing Arts, where artists are sup supposed to be poor, and it's very difficult to talk to artists because they all think they're the greatest people in the world. Mm -hmm. They all think that because they are artists, they deserve everything. And if you don't give money to artists, you are a bad guy. So, so you are competing with the artists. And I enjoy, I enjoy teaching them, telling them they're not that good. And if you're a, if you're a dancer or, a, or a, an artist that, or even a, a, an actor, there are many better ones than you in the world. And they graduated long before you did. So um, um, it was very interesting to help them work out their vision and their own, their own um, pitching, uh, their own where they stand before they really go for uh, their dream. Okay, I have a dream. This is one of the lines I hate most because it becomes so cliche and everybody when they say I have a dream seem to think that because I have a dream you have to give me money. And it's not true. It is the cheapest line ever. Anybody can say that. I have a dream. So what? I too have a dream. So why should I be supporting you? Why is your dream bigger than mine? And maybe it's just a dream, and when you wake up, you don't even care. <laughs> so, I have a dream does not sell anymore. Uh, fundraising is never about money. So this is, this is the most difficult thing um, I try to get across. Lots of people think that, well, it's fundraising, and so if I meet Mr. Lee and Mr. Ho and Mr. whatever in the street, I'll be, uh, I'll be asking for money. No, it is not about money. And if you are the senior executive in your NGO, the first thing is don't think about money. So it's about what? It's about dream. It's about courage. Courage. Now, you won't believe me, but in 10 minutes, you will agree. It's about strategy and vision. How, how big is your vision? How good is your strategy? And then you know how much you're worth. So don't just say uh, vision. What do you want to achieve? with your NGO. What do you want to achieve? And in terms of strategy, how to get there? Now, can fundraising help? Uh, do you think it can help? Those of the case say yes. Can you raise your hand? Fundraising, it can help. Oh, oh good. Many of you think that it won't help. Uh, that means it is not important, which is even better. Now, can it solve your problem? Can fundraising solve your problem? Those who say yes, please raise your hand. Oh, only two. Only three. 
Oh good, so you don't need the money to solve your problem. This is even better. How much do you want? Okay, how much do you want? Uh, we have some gentlemen uh, advice. How much? How much would you want for your NGO? For, for how long? For <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, just this year. Just this year. Twenty million per year. What? Wow, it's a big NGO. <laughs> Quite a big NGO. Okay, and who else? Any different figure? We would need five million US dollars. Five million US dollars, not too bad. Okay. Um, so we'll say as much as possible. Now this is the worst answer ever. I'm glad you're not saying that. Some will say, I just want money, I want to fit run, I want to fundraise. How much? As much as possible. And that's that's the awful answer. Because if anyone tells me he wants to raise as much as possible, I don't even want to talk to him. Because he doesn't even know what he wants, right? Um, have you heard of the story of the golden axe? Oh, um, this, this, uh, this, the man chopping the wood, what do you call it? Wood cutter. Wood cutter. Uh, was in the forest and he uh, lost his axe. So the angel came along and said, what did you lose? I lost an axe. What is the axe? Oh, it's a silver axe. And the angel said, you sure? Oh, it's a golden axe. And the angel said, okay, how, why would you need a golden axe to cut the trees? So you're lying. Bye. I'm not, doing, I'm not helping you. Is that sort of story. Fundraising is not greed. It is not how greedy you are. It is how hungry you are or how methodical you are. So remember the story of the golden axe. Don't ever tell people that I want as much money uh, uh, as possible. Just, just really say how much you need. Okay, the good story is, and the good news is, there are lots of millionaires in Hong Kong. Mm. They keep increasing. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the statistics, I think Citibank would like to put it up every year. They say that on Hong Kong Island alone, one in seven is a millionaire mm -hmm. with, uh, with a, at least a million US li um, liquid asset. Uh, um, whatever, whatever I said, then they can really dispose right of one in seven. So if you live on Hong Kong Island and look around, then many of you are able to donate to the other. <laughs> so so there, there is no lack of millionaires in Hong Kong, or no lack of people who can afford to give you money, but there is a great lack of million dollar ideas. That's what everyone agrees on. Okay, I'll give you a C and D. This is not Christian Dior. <laughs> this is um, courage and commitment and dare to dream, dare to be honest, dare to reach out, and dare to fail. Now you've heard many of these in your leadership um, courses the, the last few days. Uh, I mean this is again cliche, but if you apply it to fundraising, you'll see how it works. Uh, planning. If you're looking at, at planning, you will know that fundraising is a litmus test for your NGO strategy. It means if you're not ready, if you're not, if you're not good enough, you won't get it. So only when you're ready, when you're good enough, then you can go ahead with fundraising. Um, okay, these are the standard questions. How much do I need? How much does your organization need? Why? Why would you need that money? What's the time frame? How far would you go? How far really would you go? And how dedicated are you? You know, you know sometimes some people say, oh, I, I need um, five million for my NGO. It's a very good NGO. And then one week later, she's um, leaving for another NGO. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that sort of story? Have you heard that sort of story? It happens all the time. Because that other NGO is either better or they give, them, uh, they give her a double the salary or whatever. So, so this is what a donor will get. You know, you say you say all the nice things, and then when you start to turn around and want to discuss further, she's not long. She's no longer there. It happened. I worked in Hong Kong U for 20 years. 20 years. That's my dedication. Okay. Are you ready? Are you? Is, is your NGO really ready? Um, 
Ice Bucket Challenge, right? Very famous, very successful. Um, I will uh, suggest that you read the Ming Pao report afterwards. ALS, right? The ALS in Hong Kong. Um, the ALS in Hong Kong suffered, and the chairman came out and said they, they, they didn't expect that much money. Something like 30 million suddenly dumped on them. They didn't expect that much money. They didn't know what to do with it. And then all the members of ALS, ALS were all demanding that they get a, um, a uh, package and good money. Because, Chairman, you have 30 million. What are you doing with it? Give us the money. We are the a ALS patients. So this story um, is, uh, is in Ming Park. This story reminds you that money doesn't always solve your problem. It can create a problem for you. If your NGO is suddenly very rich, then you are in trouble. There is a, there's a green group, um, I won't tell you, but you may know, who has so much donation that they stopped receiving donation that year. Because if they receive too many, uh, people will start querying. So they just say, we, we, uh, we don't take donations anymore. Uh, interesting story. Okay, how good are you? How good are you? This is your NGO. Um, you have to evaluate yourself. Your mission, your faith, faith, I'm talking about real faith, your core values, your strength and abilities, all matter. They all matter. And so what is your goal and mission? How is it different from the neighbor? Um, there are several uh, women organizations here and several, all, not all of you are NGOs. Why would you deserve more support than the, than the one next to you? That is the question. So what are the deliverables? Uh, if people give you five million, what more will you be doing? And what will you be giving them? Uh, what are the factors of success that you can assure the donor or supporter? And why should the donor give to you and not others? That is a tough question too. Now, I was uh, sitting next to a lady. Um, she's the, um, on the board of an NGO. And she found out that I am I'm doing philanthropy and fundraising. And she said, oh, can you tell me in four minutes, I want to raise four million dollars for my very important NGO. And I, I was slightly annoyed. And I said, this is greedy. And this is, how can you, this is so unprofessional. How can you in, expect me in four minutes to help tell you how to do it? And if I could tell you, you wouldn't even be able to do it because you're so stupid. <laughs> four minutes to raise four million dollars. She, she, I mean, why could she even dare to ask such a question? This sort of mentality of, oh, if I run into Mr. Lee, I'll be able to, I'll, I'll immediately ask him for a, a million dollars. This, this is, this is unprofessional. This is no dignity. This is no dignity. Don't ever do that. Don't even think that way. So, um, so I said, I can't do it in four minutes. What if uh, I give you a book? my book, and she said, I can't read Chinese, can you summarize for me? So that's the end of the question. She, I don't think she's serious anyway. So if you're not serious about fundraising, don't even ask, because it's not nice. Um, this. Um, this is, um, 2080 is a very, um, usual move, but um, this is your strategy um, secret. Now, for a very healthy pyramid that can stay and be sustainable, it has to have a good, strong base. So if you, if you imagine, if you're trying to raise one million dollars, it is easier to find people who can donate the smaller ones, right? Very, much easier and it's harder to find the people who donate larger amounts. So the way it works is you can imagine that if you're trying to do a one million campaign and it's a healthy, sustainable one, then you would imagine that the so-called major donors would be a few, and then you try to target a lot of people. Some will say, no, if I get just one person who donates one million to me, my work is done. Okay, this is right. This is called very strategic, but this is not sustainable because you can't always find a $1 million donor. You can find it this year, but not next year. So 
if your NGO is not folding up next year, you have to go for this sort of pyramid. If your NGO is folding up next year, then of course just get a one million dollar and forget it. And that donor will also kill you because he won't want to give you one million and next year realize that it's gone to ashes. Why would I give one million dollar to something that is not going to last? So uh, this this formula tells you that whether it's one million or hundred million, you are trying to get a lot of people at different levels to support. For example, Louisa. You know, if you, if you ask her for a hundred thousand, she will have great hesitation. But maybe if you ask her for a hundred dollars, just because she knows you, she will do it. So you will find a lot of people are willing to help you on this on this basis, and then it will grow. You will tell me that, oh my God, it takes a long time to get these people, and by the time I get these people, I'll I'll be moving on to my next job. But look at it this way. Look at it this way. These people will stay with the organization if the organization. <laughs> if the organization is good, you got a, a, a call telling you they'll donate. <laughs> so if, it, if, if you have these people, they will stay with the organization as long as you stay connected with them. Say either by email, by letter, whatever. These people will grow older and get promoted and get richer. So in five years, they will be able to donate more than $100 to you. So it's a very good investment to keep this base so that they become your base support. Keep getting, keep looking for major donors, those that will help you um, short term and immediately. Uh, but the important thing is to look at this base and don't forget the smaller ones. If your NGO is going to last and if your campaign is not just a three day campaign. So if you're planning for a, for a real strategy of your NGO, yes. Sorry, um, while you're on this topic, can you talk about cultivation, stewardship, um, you know, and just recently the donor cycle, because I just feel like, you know, like this, 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 this needs a little bit more, you know, yeah, filling yeah. it. Yeah, I have uh, another 40 minutes, and exactly the word that you want. <laughs> cultivation, <laughs> solicitation, and stewardship. You know, I, I think I'll have all the words in the slides, and uh, you'll get the slides afterwards for free. Oh. <laughs> um, Okay, so this is a normal donation cycle, but uh, the words are useful. So cultivation meaning cultivate. So you start to you know really really have friends, um, cultivate relations, and so on. Solicitation is the asking, when to do the asking, how to do it. But there's no there's no fast formula. There's no one set for all formula. Um, and I'll explain. It's just like uh, dating a girl or a boy. Exactly the same thing. So the more love affairs you have, the more successful you can be in fundraising. It's, it's the same. And then stewardship is afterwards. Um, remember, fundraising doesn't stop after you get the gift. It starts after you get the gift. Because before you get the gift, who cares, you know, you can forget him afterwards. But after he's, he or she has given you a gift, then the relationship begins. Then, you, then, then it can be for life. Um, again, um, because I've worked 20 years in the university, I have the privilege of um, keeping a long relationship with a lot of friends. And uh, we, we talk about everything, you know, their marriage, their divorce, their children, their whatever. And then every now and then they'll say, oh, I feel like you know, I'm, my birthday is coming up, I want to make a gift to myself, so I'll donate a million for a scholarship. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Um, and if you've worked 20 years like me, you 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 enjoy all these stories. Okay, so uh, yeah, remember these people are uh, you know the people at the top. They're the they are they are they are the poor ones. They are the money people with money, but they're not always the happiest. So sometimes do do give them a lot, a bit of patience, a bit of understanding. Like your NGOs, right? You take care of all these underprivileged people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we got we got through this uh, interesting story of dynamics of, uh, and 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 uh, you're right. You don't you don't have to take that one million dollar. You but you have to find your own reason and your own strategy. You can't just you can't just judge the donor and then decide whether you take the money, right? And um, see, this is so very dramatic. So if you if you can take drama and you can act and you can take a certain role, like when you're sitting there like Choi, don't, don't take it personally. You are representing your organization. 
and remember that this person, why, why she has chosen to talk to you is because she has feeling, good or bad, for your organization. Okay, so um, you've heard it. Raising, you know, fundraising is raising fame, uh, visibility. People have to know you, and you have to sort of get a brand. Raising friends. Talking about raising friends. Do you want Ellie as a friend? She was unhappy for the first ten minutes, and she doesn't know why she's unhappy. She doesn't know why she's giving you one minute. But, <laughs> so are, are we really? Are we really? Are we really honest about raising friends or? You know, some people really don't like to meet people. Um, you have to, you have to realize in your team, some people are not what we call people, people, pe people, people, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Some people don't like. They, they rather face a computer or the mobile, uh, but they don't like facing people. Uh, it's true. But some people just enjoy, uh, enjoy doing it, and and they they won't feel bad if somebody is a little. Uh, Impolite, and they and will, they will feel very good when when they run into a good person. Uh, but it's also it can also be very emotional. So you, you have to find the right person to do this kind of work. So raising friends is a lot more difficult than you think. But you do want friends for your NGO, a, a circle of friends, and raising funds. Now we are looking for partners, not tycoons or donors. You know, partners meaning they would really share your mission, go with you. So again, do you want Ali to be your partner in future, or do you want to give up on her? It's your choice, and it's probably not the one million dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, although some would say, well, if I can convert her, she'll give me more later. Well, that's another story. Uh, but it's true that in the Asian culture, um, sometimes the the idea of face, of insult, of you're insulting me, I can't take it. Sometimes it comes in very strong too. Will you ask a question? No? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, what do you need? You need a friend, a supporter, a sponsor, or a donor. Um, they, they are similar, but you have to really have this very clear in your mind. You know, uh, again, we use this very exaggerated case because it will illustrate the issue very clearly. Okay, fundraising. It has to be fun. <laughs> Um, how many of you would feel that you, 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 you have a problem going to asking for money because you feel like a beggar? Oh, Louisa. <laughs> you and who else? So, so um, um, Sax uh, Simon. and Simon. Yes. What would you do? Your NGO needs to get support, meet people, and get um, asked for donations. Ask someone. Uh, who are better than me in, the, in yeah. doing this job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, not, that, not, not better than you, but who's more suitable to do this yeah. job? Yeah. It's true, it's true. It's like a family. In the family there are people who, who do sports, who do this, who play the piano, and you, you take the one who, who's uh, playing the piano to talk to the music person. So, so don't, you know, if you're the NGO senior leader, don't feel that it must be you who go down. And you can you can get somebody else who likes and enjoy people. In my team, I'm not the best. Um, I have some I have some colleagues who are just wonderfully sweet. So sweet that when I see them, I say, Oh my God, I can't do that. It's too sweet. It's too sweet. Um, too sweet. Uh, but some of them are really like that. It's it's their nature, and they are not and they are not hypocritical. They're not hypocritical. They just love people, and they just enjoy talking to people. And I look at them and say, oh my god, I've got lovely angels in my office. You know? <laughs> and people like to talk to them. I'm, 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 I'm not very good. And sometimes I can be very nasty, very blunt. And, I, and I, when people probably say, okay, what up now? Okay, finish? Bye. <laughs> 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 and, and some of them know me and they say, oh, I'm, I'll, I won't bother, want to bother you. I'll talk to the other people. Yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 it happens. So if you have an... NGO that is more than one person, you're lucky. Then you can try to find the, uh, divide the work. And um, of course, sometimes the, the CEO himself or herself has to go out and do this as well. Uh, but then you should know your own character. If you are the sort of person who doesn't smile, who doesn't always say nice things, who doesn't eat, who talk, who can't talk anything else except about your NGO, then you're not the one to do it. You're not the one to do it. Of course, your friends will want to talk to you about your NGO, but not throughout the three hours of, of, a, of a meal. So
So um, you must be um, a more life enjoying person. You can talk about other things and then talk about maybe current affairs and about other things so that it can, you can build the relation. And, and not just talk about money. Usually, at a, when you're talking to a donor, even at a dinner for three hours, you don't spend more than 15 minutes talking about money. You won't. Okay, this is Donald Trump um, saying that he will run for election. You know what he said? He said, I am very rich. <laughs> That's why you should choose me. This is very American. But listen to the logic. I don't need anybody's money. I don't need anybody's money. I'm using my own money. I'm not using the lobbyists. I'm not using donors' money. I don't care. I'm really rich. How about that? How about that? That's very American, of course, because American campaigns all require a lot of money. But what he's saying is, you, you remember Obama. Obama was very successful because he ran a very big campaign with that pyramid, and the bottom was, wow, millions of people. So he, was, he, got, he got everybody to donate $5. $5, $5, $5. So he got a big base of support, because everyone who donated $5 knew and remembered that they support Obama. Now this guy says, I won't be affected by the donors. Never mind about Ellie. I won't take that insult. She can't insult me. I won't take money from Simon. He can't tell me what to do. You can't control my organization. You can't control my politics. Because I'm rich. And I'm very rich. How about that? You like that? <laughs> Dangerous person. <laughs> I think if he's so rich and he doesn't care about other people, how as a president would he care about me? Right, right. But he's saying, all you people, you need donors, and you and you will listen to the donors, and the donors will control you, you'll, you'll get into the board, and now you say you don't want donors controlling you, you don't want donors coming to tell you what to do. See, I am very rich, I don't need that. This is a question for you. This is a question for you. Do you think that the people who are supporting you are trying to control you? Do you think that if you don't need donors, then you are absolutely um, glorious? Maybe not. Maybe getting supporters is part of your strategy of community support. It's part of that demo democratic process of making sure that you, you fulfill and address the community's needs rather than your own arrogant Donald Trump kind of psychology, which is also NGO. These are all the things that you have to know about fundraising case statements, strategy planning, board, da 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 da, or crowdfunding, da da da. Donor cycle and donor circle, and then da da da, more words, more, and when you're naming um, power and empower, I actually, that's the name of my course. Um, okay, you will, as I said in the beginning, I already uh, declared, disclaimed, I will not be able to teach you fundraising within uh, an hour. You need at least 70 hours. And you need at least 70, seven years of, ex of practice. But if you can do all that, then perhaps you'll get $7 million of donation, at least. At least. Don't ask me why I get this formula, but it's true. <laughs> and um, do forge ahead with what we discussed, dignity, pride, passion, I forgot the word integrity, self-sacrifice, there is not getting into bed with a donor, but self-sacrifice when, when they insult you or they make you unhappy or something, something. But but there's a lot of self-sacrifice. Why am I sitting here being insulted by you? Oh, okay, because I'm I'm the department officer. So there's a lot of professionalism when you do that. And um, there is a secret recipe for success, but of course it's not as easy as that. Um, no pain, no gain. There's a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Uh, but there's also a lot of joy when you have really converted your donors, your friends, when you really, really built a good network for your organization, a good network, not just one or two, um, and you have represented your organization well and shared your mission. There are many, many books. I've got uh, more than 100 in my little library. Uh, so, so do believe that fundraising uh, is very professional, very expertise, and there's a lot of knowledge in it, including integrity and all the principles you can find in um, defining your NGO. Um, I also wrote this book, which is still in Chinese. I haven't done it in English yet. Um, but there are also many stories in there, and I, most, most of what I've said are in. So with that, thank you very much. Most enjoyable. Thank you for your... Uh,